loved Kaya. Kaya. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my April wrap up for 2023. I read a total of six books this month so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is Just Breathe by Cami McGovern. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows David, who is the senior class president. He is battling cystic fibrosis and has landed in the hospital once again with a flare-up. It also follows Jamie, a sophomore with depression, who is a volunteer at the hospital. The two become friends while she is working at the hospital, and it's like the story of what comes from that. I am personally not the biggest fan of the love will solve everything trope, which I do think that this began to go in that direction. I do think David and Jamie were a good match, and I do think that they had chemistry. I liked their banter between one another that they eventually got to once Jamie opened up a bit more. The story is told in multiple point of view between Jamie and David, and I can't really say I liked one over the other. I just didn't personally care all that much about either of these characters, and there was a lot of cheating in this book, which I am not a fan of, both emotionally and physically, from multiple characters. So I didn't exactly love this. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. Just wasn't my cup of tea. The next book I have is How to Excavate a Heart by Jake Maya Arlo, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. After being dumped by her girlfriend Shawnee decides to accept an internship at the Smithsonian. On her way to her accommodations, Shawnee's mother almost runs over a girl in the streets. Shawnee ends up taking a dog walking job and she discovers that the owner of the dog's daughter is none other than the girl that they almost ran over. As the two spend more time together, they start to fall for one another and it's their story. The book was pretty average for me. I don't think that it was anything new or revolutionary in this genre, but I did have a fun time reading it. This is pitched as an enemies to lovers story, which I personally do not think that it should be advertised that way because the enemies to lovers aspect happened for about two seconds before they were declaring their love for one another. I was not the biggest fan of Shawnee. I just found her to be a little bit annoying and I didn't like how obsessed she was with May within like two days of their relationship. I just gave me ick vibes. I think that the story would have benefited a lot from having dual point of view. We only get Johnny, but I think if we also got chapters from May's perspective, we would have been able to understand her character a little bit more. My favorite part of the book, and the real showstopper in my opinion, was 96 year old Beatrice. She was this little old lady that Shawnee was staying with and she 100% stole every single scene that she was in. She was just so much fun to read about. Also, big fan of Raphael. He's the corgi in the story, which plays a big part. And I just wanted a whole story about Beatrice and Raphael. Overall, I think it was cute, but nothing new to the romance genre, so I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, we have The Boyfriend Effect by Ken Kendall Ryan, and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Hayes, who is a serial dater. He just got dumped by his latest girlfriend because he couldn't commit to something more serious with her. The problem, you may ask, is that he is in love with his best friend's younger sister, Marin, for as long as he can remember. So Hayes decides to take a break from dating and focus all of his attention on trying to save the retirement home that Marin works at. This took me a very long time to read. I started it on February 24th and I didn't finish it until April 22nd. I don't think it was necessarily a bad book, but I don't think anything actually happened in the entire book, and it was a fairly short book. I was also just a little bit annoyed at how much unnecessary struggle Marin and Hayes caused for each other when it came to Marin's older brother, Wolfie. I just wish they sat Wolfie down and had an adult conversation and said, hey, we like each other, because it caused so much unnecessary problems for them. There was just literally nothing to worry about and it just seemed kind of pointless by the end of the book. As for the characters, I think that they were all right, but nothing I haven't seen before. I liked Marin's character, but she did cry a lot. I did like Marin and Hayes together. I think that they were very cute and they definitely cared for one another. I think the saving grace of this book for me was Rosie Hayes' grandmother and Dawn, who is a resident at the retirement home that Marin works at. I think that they were so much fun, and I really want a spin-off series of just those two because I adored them. Honestly, if it wasn't for them, I think I would have given it a 2 or a 1.5 star, so take that as you will. 
I gave it a 2.5. Next up, we have Never Vacation With Your Ex. This is by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows 17-year-old Kaylee, who is an up-and-coming volleyball star. She just broke up with her best friend slash boyfriend named Dean. He has not spoken to her since the breakup, but now their families are going on their annual three-week trip to California. So this is basically the story of that vacation and how awkward it is. I'm a big fan of the second chance romance, so if you make it a friends to lovers to enemies to reluctant friends to lovers, I'm all in. I will say that I think that Kaylee was a tad bit annoying at times, especially when she was denying her feelings for Dean the entire time when everybody knew she still had feelings for him. I guess I just don't fully understand why she chose to break up with him when she clearly still loved him the entire time. It just it seemed a little bit messy to me. I think I just felt that she was very self-absorbed and didn't give a fuck about anybody else's feelings, which made it very hard to feel any sympathy towards her. What I did like about the story was the exploration of family expectations and the need to be perfect. I think that that was the one area of the story that I really did relate to Kaylee. I was also a competitive athlete for the majority of my life, and I feel like I was always in the shadow of my dad, who was huge in the basketball community in my city. So everybody knew who he was, so they expected me to be as good as he was, which at times was very difficult. I honestly would have rather had a whole story about Kaylee's feelings around her mother and the sport that she's playing rather than her mixed feelings. But that's just me. It was an enjoyable enough story for me to give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but I wanted more of the struggle rather than the romance. Next up I have Snow and Poison by Melissa Dela Cruz. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Lady Sophie who is about to debut into society on the same night that her father, Duke Maximilian, is supposed to marry a woman named Claudia. Lady Sophie ends up meeting the young prince of Spain named Philip who she feels an instant connection with. The only problem is is that the king of Spain decides that Lady Sophie is not fit for his son and decides that she needs to be eliminated from his life. So in order to survive, Lady Sophie Sophie has to flee into the forest. I am a huge sucker for any fairy tale retelling, so I really enjoyed this loose retelling of Snow White. I will say it was definitely not my favorite that I have read so far. I did really enjoy the female relationships in this and the exploration of females in power. I liked how I couldn't really tell which characters were good and which were evil, and I liked having to discover their motivations and intentions behind the things that they were doing. I do think that the pacing was a little weird in this. At times it flew by and I was trying to keep up with the story, but then other times it dragged a ridiculous amount, so it just felt a little bit off to me. But overall, I did enjoy my time reading it. It was enjoyable. I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I have is When You Wish Upon a Lantern by Gloria Chow. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Laya and Kai who have been best friends for a very long time until an incident causes them to no longer talk to one another. But after the death of her grandmother, Laya discovers that her family's wishing lantern business is in debt. So she decides to enlist the help of Kai in order to save the business by secretly granting the wishes as their friendship rekindles, that their feelings for one another blossom into something else, and it's the story of that. I really loved Laia and Kai's relationship. I think that they were very, very cute together. I thought that they had great chemistry together, and I really liked watching their romance blossom. I'm also just a sucker for childhood friends to lovers, so you know I ate this shit up. Laia did get on my nerves a couple of times just because her inability to communicate with literally anybody about her feelings. It just got very annoying very quickly because if she had one conversation with one person, then all of her problems would have just not mattered because they literally would not have existed. I loved Kai's character. I think that he is such a little sweetie pie and I want to protect him at all costs. I also really enjoyed reading about the complex family dynamics, not only with 
within individual families, but the community as a whole. I also really enjoyed the inclusion of the Mandarin words and the glossary in the back. I thought that that was really cool to learn more about. Overall, I do think that it was an average read, but I do think it was cute and worth the read, so I give it a 3 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the 6 books that I read for the month of April 2023. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Bye.